In this video, we're going to take a look at the future value function. The future value function is used when you know how much money you have right now, you know how much you can afford to save every period, you know how long you're going to be saving the money, and you know what your annual interest rate is, and all of those things remain constant over uh, the entire time period. And if you know those things, you can figure out what the future value is going to be, how much money you're going to have down the road. So. I've got my regular template set up here with all five of the values that are required for this. I need the present value, the payment, future value, number of periods, and the rate. And since future value is what I'm trying to calculate, I just blocked out that cell for now, and we're going to put the answer over here in the blue box. I've also got um, two cells down here that have formulas in them. Uh, the number of periods is going to be, if I double click on this, it shows me these numbers are going to be multiplied right here. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the periods per year times the number of years, so that'll just calculate for me automatically. And the other one is the uh, formula for the rate. And uh, the rate is going to be the um, annual interest rate divided by the periods per year. And uh, it tells me right now I'm dividing by zero because the periods per year is, has nothing in it right now, so it's treating that as a zero, but that'll take care of itself once I start putting the numbers in. So here's the problem we want to solve. If you currently have $20,000 in the bank, so the amount you have currently is $20,000. Now, in Excel and in all these financial functions, uh, the payment is always a negative number. The money that you put into the bank is always considered negative, and the beginning balance in a bank account is basically the sum of a bunch of payments that you have already made. Therefore, in a problem like this, the beginning balance also has to be uh, negative, but we'll put the minus sign in when we actually do the formula later on. So right now it's just going to be 20,000. The deposit's going to be 100. The periods per year is going to be 12. Number of years it says is 40. The annual interest rate is 10%. And notice when I do that, it automatically computes that the number of periods will be 480. That's the product of these two. And the rate per month is going to be the annual rate divided by 12. And it says that we're going to make our payments at the beginning of each month, and 1 is the code that's used for the beginning. So we got all our data entered over here now, and we're good to go on computing the future value. This is going to be on the formulas tab, and it's on the financial functions. And they're in alphabetical order, and here's my future value. And uh, the rate down here, be sure you look down here, it says the rate is the rate per period, so that's going to be this number, not the number up here. The number of periods is going to be this number, not the number of years. The payment is always negative, and it's going to be this, and in this case, the present value is the sum of a bunch of payments I've already made, so we also need a negative sign here, and the type is going to be 1 for the beginning of the month, and if I click on OK, it computes that at the end of this period I will have 1.7 million dollars. And that's how the future value function works.